In this video, we're going to see how do we get linear regression lines and make predictions. So I'm using the same triple hop in Old Faithful data that we used in the previous section. And I already have my data in Excel and the scatter plot. So to get a linear regression line or a linear trend line or the line of best fit, it can go by a bunch of different names. You right click on a data point and then go to add trend line. Where did it go? There we go. So right click on a data point, add trend line, and we want the linear trend line and to display the equation on screen. Close that. There we go. All right, so we have our equation on the screen and we see that it's y equals 0.0929x minus 1.5348. So our slope is the number in front of the x, the 0 0.0929. And this tells us that for each increase of the triple hop length, the vertical jump increases by 0 0.0229. Or so every time our triple hop gets bigger by a unit, our vertical jump gets bigger by 0.929 units. And then our initial value is the negative 1.5348 number. And this one doesn't really make sense in context, but if you jumped zero in the triple hop, the vertical jump would be negative 1.5348, which you can't have a negative jump. It's totally fine that it doesn't make sense in context. A lot of the time, the initial value really doesn't. So to get our predicted values, what we're going to do is put our triple hop data into the equation. So we're going to type equals 0 0.0929 times, and cell reference that first triple hop number, minus 1.5348, then hit enter. And then you can go back up to that equation, hover over the bottom right hand corner and double click on the plus sign or click and drag it down and it will fill in all the predictions. So we can see for the first one, there was an actual vertical jump of 33, but we predicted 34.05. So that's an over prediction. The next one, the actual jump was 71.1, but we predicted 71.02. So that's an under prediction. And then to get the residuals, what we do is we take our original data point minus what we predicted. So the original, which is O, minus P for predicted. And one thing that's funny about the residuals is the sign is always opposite of what I think it should be. You know, we said for this first one, it over predicted. So I would think the residual would be a positive number, but it's not. Why is it not? That's just the way it's defined. But residuals are always the opposite sign from what I think they should be. So if we over predicted our residuals negative, saying that our actual data was 1.05 units below what was predicted. And then again, we can click on that plus sign on the bottom right corner, either double click or click and drag down and get all of our residuals. So the smaller the residual, the closer the prediction was to the data point, the bigger the residual, the further away the prediction was. So let's do all that one more time with Old Faithful. So we have our Old Faithful data and our Old Faithful scatter plot. I'm going to right click on a data point, add trend line, linear display equation, and close it out. So this time our equation is y equals 12.481x plus 33.683. So our slope is the 12.481 number. This tells us for each extra minute that the eruption lasts, it will take an extra 12.481 minutes until the next eruption. And then our initial value, or our y-intercept, is the 33.383 number, and this tells us that if the duration lasted zero minutes, it would be 33.383 minutes until the next one, which again doesn't really make sense because you can't have 
an eruption lasting zero minutes, but that's what this is telling us, that if it did last zero minutes, it would take us about 33 minutes until the next one happened. All right, so to get our predictions, we do equals 12.481 times the duration plus 33.383 to enter, and then go up and drag it down. So you see we've got under predictions for the first three, those are all under predictions, but then the fourth one down is an over prediction. And then to get our residuals, we take our original data point minus the prediction. And we can see that even though we had an underestimate, our residual is positive. Again, it's always opposite from, in my mind, what I think it should be. And then we can double click on the plus sign or click and drag down to fill in the rest.